The Symphony of Creation In the very beginning, when the universe was just a whisper waiting to be heard, God decided to create a magnificent symphony. He wanted to fill the void with music so sweet and a story so compelling that all who heard it would feel love and joy. First, God created tiny sparks of life called single-celled organisms. These little creatures were the first notes in his symphony, extremely small complex machines intended to be perfect in their mechanical harmony. They were tiny life machines, each capable of surviving in the harshest environments, from boiling heat to icy cold. God admired their resilience and their ability to adapt, for they were the foundation of his melody. As the melody progressed, God introduced more notes, frail but beautiful organisms with many cells each doing the most beautiful special things. These were more complex but much more frail than the single-celled organisms, like beautiful harmonies added to the original simple tune. These new creatures could not only survive but could join together, each cell playing its part in the grand orchestra. They were like choirs and orchestras, each one adding depth to the creation. With each new form of life, from the smallest plant to the largest animal, God's symphony grew richer and more complex. The plants breathed life into the air, and the animals roamed the lands and swam in the seas. Each creature, no matter how big or small, added a unique note to the symphony, playing the music written in their hearts by God. The symphony faced crescendos of change known as mass extinction events and upheavals in general. These periods were like great size in the music of creation, where many species played their final notes and then dramatically exited the stage. But even in these moments of apparent silence and loss, the symphony did not falter. Instead, it evolved, finding new harmonies in the spaces left behind. The disappearance of some voices led to the rise of others, each adaptation and new species enriching the composition further. This ongoing transformation showcased the resilience and enduring creativity of the symphony, ensuring that the music of creation continued to grow in complexity and beauty, echoing through time as a testament to the dynamic and adaptive nature of God's masterpiece. Even creatures like lions and wolves joined the symphony and God incorporated their balanced harmonies in his symphony. These predators, though fierce, played a vital role in maintaining the harmony of creation. They helped to balance the population of many other animals, ensuring that no single note would overpower the others, preserving the diversity and beauty of the melody. God then created humans, beings with the ability to understand and appreciate the symphony. He gave them a special role, to be the keepers of the melody, to nurture the harmony of creation, and to love every note and every creature. But remember, God told them, every creature, every plant, and every rock is part of this symphony. You must care for them as you would a precious melody. For this symphony is not just about survival, it is about love and communion. As time went on, the humans intuitively heard the music that confirmed that every struggle and every challenge in nature was not a battle for survival, but a call to come together in love and cooperation, allowing new kinds of melodies to sound through. Little did they know that God already made the masters of survival to be the single-celled organisms who were always playing their bass notes and in the background ensuring our survival while we played, each in our own community orchestra, forming part of God's orchestra of orchestras. Even today, you can see this perfect harmony if you just go into the deep, untouched nature. The humans saw that the trees did not just grow to reach the sunlight, but to provide shade and shelter to others. The rivers did not just flow to reach the sea, but to nourish the land and all its creatures. Little did they know about the small bacteria that nurtured the roots of all plants and the digestive systems of many, many life forms. The humans just hear the bass sounds of God's initial intent to build perfect life forms. Even the actions of predators were seen not as acts of violence, but as essential parts of a grand design, ensuring that all life could flourish. This understanding brought a deeper peace and respect for the natural world. 
It was only very much later that humans turned away from their task of being keepers of the melody that they first realized what violence is and that it can only come from human hearts. And so, the children of the earth began to live in harmony with all creation, understanding that each creature, each plant, and each rock was a note in God's grand symphony. They learned to listen to the music of the forests, the songs of the seas, and the whispers of the winds. As they cared for the earth and all its inhabitants, they realized that they were not just part of God's creation but active participants in the divine symphony of love. They sang with the birds, danced with the leaves, and celebrated life with every creature, praising God through their love for each other and his creation. And in this way, the symphony continued, ever beautiful, ever evolving, and ever echoing the love and communion that was its true purpose. The Discord in the Symphony In the harmonious world of God's grand symphony, every note had its place, every rustle its purpose, and every breath its song. The creatures of the earth, the plants, the rivers, and the winds all played their parts in a melody woven by God himself. Humans were given a special role, to be the keepers of this melody, to care for and cherish every part of God's creation. However, as time passed, some humans began to feel a stirring of pride and envy in their hearts. Somehow they perceived the single-celled organisms, the bass notes of God's symphony, admired for their mechanical perfection and efficiency. These tiny creatures could survive in the harshest environments, adapt quickly, and seem free from the complex needs and responsibilities that burden human life. They simply thrived and were perfect consumers without any conscious care about anything. Why can't we be like them? Why must we deal with the complexities of life, the heartaches, the moral dilemmas? They wondered. Influenced by this envy, these humans decided they no longer wanted to be just keepers of the melody. They wanted to simplify their existence, to be like the single-celled organisms, mechanistically perfect, without the need for deeper relationships or the responsibilities that came with them. Led by this desire, they began to ignore the intricate ties that bound them to all creation. They preferred individual freedoms like a single bacterium able to reproduce and consume optimally. They stopped nurturing the plants, caring for the animals, and respecting the natural flows of rivers and winds. Instead, they tried to control and optimize everything, stripping away the diversity and richness of the symphony to create a monotonous tune that mirrored the simplicity they envied. As they pursued this path, the symphony of creation began to falter. The once rich spectrum of sounds turned into a dissonant clamor. Forests grew silent without the diversity of species. Rivers choked and stagnated when their courses were heedlessly altered. Animals suffered as the delicate balance of their ecosystems was disrupted and human communities dissolved into atomized individuals. The Restoration of the Eternal Symphony Amidst this chaos, a group of wise children, guided by the teachings of Christ, recognized the devastation wrought by humanity's arrogance. These children understood that the discord was not merely a failure of duty, but a deep-seated rebellion against the composer's design, a rebellion akin to that once led by Christ's adversary. Moved by love and a longing for restoration, these children turned to the acts of Christ, who, in his boundless grace, had taken upon himself the discord of the world. On the cross, Christ bore the dissonance of human sin and through his resurrection, demonstrated that the ultimate outcome of God's symphony would be one of victory over destruction and chaos. Inspired by Christ's sacrifice and resurrection, these children became ambassadors of restoration. They taught others that their role was not to seek survival and consumer competition like bacteria do, but to embrace the complexity of God's creation with love and care. They spread the message that through Christ, they could participate in the restoration of the symphony, healing the wounds inflicted by human hands. Together, in their restored human communities, they replanted diverse forests, purified rivers, and nurtured animals back to health. With each act of kindness and stewardship, 
the melody of creation grew stronger and the harmony began to resonate once again across the land. They managed to play the new harmonies that came from all their deep new knowledge about mechanical processes and found ways to harmonize all the most beautiful human intentions and melodies. These children of Christ knew their work was part of a larger plan. They understood that one day, God would return to make his dwelling among them, forever part of the symphony he had created. Until that day, they continued to restore, to love, and to care, living out the victory of Christ in every note they healed. Their lives were a testament to the power of redemption, a melody of hope that played on, inviting all to join in the restoration of the symphony, to live in communion with God, each other, and all creation, echoing the ultimate triumph of love and harmony. The End